Not the final destination, but the journey is where we live. Great lyrics. Great lyrics indeed. Especially for this time where everyone's like, Oh, Elden's gonna kill us next month, and if that doesn't get us, they'll get us in 2012, whatever. Fuck that shit. There's cool changes going on, and we're in the middle of a brilliant journey to the reality we want to see and be. And I uh, hope everyone's uh, being cool now as we have replenished our whatevers during our break. And uh, you feeling replenished there, lad? Oh, absolutely. I've actually fixed my second Java issue of the day. Some nice, wonderful coffee. Well, you are a technological badass like that and multitasking, multidimensional being and such. So that's good. <laughs> so, and, uh, and speaking of multifaceted, multidimensional, you know, quite intelligent beings, how's it going there, James? Hello, can you hear me? Here you good. All right, all right. Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm ready for another hour. <laughs> all right, cool. It's like, it, it, this has just flown by, too, and I know... Uh, yeah, I know. There's so much that, that we really can talk about. Um, and so, uh, so actually, really, I, I wanted to just go ahead and continue with anything that you were going with there. Um, I didn't want to... Don't, don't necessarily need to break the, the subject if you if there's something you want to continue with there. Oh no, I, I think um I think I'm pretty much done talking about Nathan and the Super Soldiers. Um yeah, I mean I have my own video series where I talk about this stuff. I'm, it's called uh, um Super Soldier Talk with James Rank. You can find it on YouTube if you want to learn more about this stuff. Um and I I interview I interview a lot of other people who have been involved, so it's not just me. Uh so you know, and I would talk about various subjects, and a lot of it, you know, it's just like this. You know, the, what this remote viewer said this, this psychic said that. So, you know, and and sometimes <laughs> we actually do have physical evidence. We we try to bring that in, but um, you know, we just it's it's totally open minded. We don't really hold back. It's not like you know we're trying to do, um, trying to put together here uh, some kind of you know a, a work cited page with all this different you know hard data, but we just put piece together what we can. And that's yeah, that's absolutely. Yeah, and that's that's obviously why we try to do the same thing here with like with with the show because um you know no one really no one knows everything. We're all trying to just tell what we understand of the truth knowing that it's the collective truth that's called reality really shapes, you know, facts. So, um so yeah, we just got to do our best to kind of report as we see and observe and report as we see. You know, with as little as bias as we can, and so yeah, the remote viewer told me this. I mean, I think that's that's pretty much how you have to report it. You know yeah, what I mean? I know. <laughs> yeah, and it's and and if it's true, it's true. If it's not, it's not. And obviously, the remote viewer wants to be accurate because I could be like, oh, I'm gonna give James some bullshit, so I look like an asshole. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, that's generally not the intention of, of right. psychic work. So it's like, so that's one thing. Like, you know, I had a conversation recently about this too. About you know, I kind of cite, cite it as any other sort of data source. So if it's like this news article. You know, it's the same to me as this remote viewer, you know, because if it's accurate, it's accurate, you know? Yeah. So, <clears throat> or well, not, you know, <laughs> way. I also, on the side, um, I'm also working uh, to help people that have been involved with Mark Ultra um, and MK programming, uh, people who have been mind-controlled. I have this company that I, I sell these meditation machines. Maybe this is why I can start shifting to talk about this. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody here knows anything. Of course, my um, my ID is Neologic. My my website is www.neologicaltech.com. And um, these these meditation machines, what they actually do is they they bring chi energy into your body that is um, tied in or t in tune with sacred geometry. And when your body is in tune with basically life force energy, sacred geometry is basically um, well life force. Sacred geometry, all these patterns repeat over and over in the universe because it's all in, in, in tune with God. So the idea is if you can bring your body in tune with God, you know, mind control, um, ill health, dis disease, stress, all these problems can be brought down. So I set up this website um, to help um, bring this technology out to the public. It is actually extraterrestrial technology. It was channeled from the Guardians of the Galactic Federation of Light. And um, the Guardians, normally, they don't release technology to um, to uh, people or to, you know, humans here on planet Earth because of the law of non-interference. But because um, so much of us, so many of us have been exposed to mind control that our free will has been interfered with. 
So they want they have um, they're releasing this technology and um, also because we're, we're approaching 2012 and some people are having trouble with the ascension process to help people who are sort of having trouble um, with that process that process and it can actually raise your vibrational frequency so that you can become more and more psychic. And if it wasn't for this technology, I probably wouldn't even be able to do this interview with you because I would be just uh, I, um, because of the, my past experiences, I was emotional wreck. I mean, mm -hmm. if, as you, as you heard earlier, I was project I was part of Project Abandon, so um, I don't talk about you know the bad the, the horrible things that happened in my life. I mean, when I was younger, I I had a severe speech impediment. I couldn't even hardly talk, and so. Uh, I've come a long way from being able to hardly talk to starting, you know, doing neologic and and also changes on the horizon. Uh, we can talk about that in just a moment. But uh, the, yeah. the other thing I wanted to also mention on my website is that um, we have uh, the inventor of this technology uh, has actually, you know, we were actually thinking about bringing slowly. We were going to bring not first. We're going to start with this meditation technology. Um, which which you, you can you can purchase one on my website if you want to get one. It's uh, just use uh, James uh, coupon code J A M E S my name. You get ten percent off. But um, w if first we were going to start off with meditation machines, and then we were going to go into free energy and then anti gravity and teleportation and time travel technologies. But what happened is that um, the government got hold of my inventor, and he's and back in um, July, he started getting phone calls. Um, on his cell phone and his home phone that basically from what he told me it was like a computerized sounding voice and it said um, your technology will be ours and um, he is also very very clairvoyant so he looked him up in the Akashic record and uh, he uh, recognized that these people were actually uh, part of the cabal head and that um, at that point he started getting more and more phone calls from like an NSA liaison they wanted to either ex um, to basically um, they wanted to bring him to either New York or to Europe to actually meet with the cabal head to discuss on what to do with Neologic. And not only that, to discuss what to do with James Rink. Because um, they consider me a, um, they consider me very dangerous and they consider me a rogue asset. Even though I technically don't have all my psychic gifts and I can't like, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, access Agent Sabretooth, who is supposedly my, my alter ego. But, nice. um, huh? That's a nice designation there. I like that call sign. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what it, supposedly my file says. But, um, so, so, uh, so, you know, the, the option was either to A, it was to buy us out, you know, and I can tell you right now that I would refuse, you know, th there isn't any money in the universe that I would want because to, if I can use technology to strip mind control out of people, I would, I would, I would fucking do it. The hell with the money. It's not yeah. about money. You know, we're we're, at, we're we're almost at a point in our, in our lives where we're about to hit a pole shift. This planet is about to, you know we're, the continents and all of us are about to go under the sea if something doesn't change because the consciousness is so dark and the energy is so negative. The planet will literally clean the uh, clean the slate. And I don't want to have you know negative karma you know the, that this late hour to get bought out. So the other option was to either was to bring us into the shadow government. Where the military will actually weaponize the neos for, um, you know, for military combat um, opera, um, you know, uh, operations. So, uh, and I can tell you, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. And the uh, the other option was either to kill my kill the inventor, and they can't really kill me because I'm I'm the elite of the elite, and I biolocate a new body. <laughs> you know, if they try to kill me. So um, the other, so finally, I guess the the other option left was to kidnapped the inventor and they brought him to a from what I've been told um, I had like three or four remote viewers look into this he was actually brought to an underground facility they saw South America and then one individual saw Venezuela and um, he's in an underground facility right now um, he is actually being they they're he's put they're putting him into a brainwashing chair and he he's actually being um, programmed to create these neos for the the, the, the cabal and they're being used for black rat magic rituals. So, um, so while that's going on, the original, I mean, the you know, they they actually put a clone. See, I really don't know if they put a clone of him in his place or, or if they brainwashed him. But when he came back from this meeting with the NSA, um, he he sabotaged this operation. He he went he made deals behind my back. 
Um, he's he's totally fear based. He said every time I call him up, well, last time we talked, he said the cabal is going to come after you to kill you and your family. And I'm like, okay, we'll put that in writing. And after that, you know, and plus he violated his contract, so I don't work with him anymore, unfortunately. So it's almost like, you know, he came back from the end. I said, no, after his meeting, he was a changed man. So unfortunately, it, it looks like we're not going to be able to release any of these other technologies. But um, what I would like to do, since we got a little bit of time, um, is it okay that we could do a quick meditation? Sure. It's, uh, got it. Okay. It's only it'll only take like a, a minute or two. And what I'm going to do, because um, I got my Neo right here in front of me, and I'm going to activate my unit, and we're going to counteract the effects of the, the cabal. So let's go ahead and do this. And there's an activation protocol. It may sound a little weird, but um, just bear with me, and I'll give you instructions. So everybody, just uh, close your eyes. Device, activate and increase, and I'm activating my unit. At this point, I wait till I feel the torsion energy from the unit, and it feels like um, pulsing energy, and I, I feel it right now. Device activate and increase. And you, you might feel something in your hands, depending on how psychic and clairvoyant you are. Device, we trust you completely to integrate our mind, body, and spirit. At this point, I want you to visualize the Stargate via your pineal gland. Stargate, activate and increase. Device, activate Stargate mode. Automatic mode. Device, neutralize any of the effects of this technology being used for evil if the military is being used or the, the cabal or the illuminati or whoever is in charge of it the reptilians whoever is using this technology for evil device we ask that all the people in this that are listening to this right now would use their consciousness energy their own thoughts to neutralize any effects of evil that this technology is being used for make it as if their machines and all their trillions of dollars of technology Make it as if it's a, as if it's totally nothing. Device, we also ask that you would strip the power from the cabal to bring the power to strip them to strip their power and, and bring it down the whole system and return us to a system of government that reflects the views of um, justice, peace for all, and honesty and a, a, a government that reflects the needs of its people. And right now, I want you to visualize. Um, an eraser going through Washington, D.C. and just racing all the negativity of, you know, the politicians, the reptilians, the cabal, the black magic rituals, and I want you to just erase it all with an eraser, and I want you to visualize a golden age occurring where cities of crystals, uh, crystals of light being generated all over the world and free energy and teleportation technologies coming out. In the end of this cabal, and let's, let's visualize the cabal coming to an end and seeing them being rounded up and arrested, and uh, enormous prosperity and abundance coming out. Because I know a lot of people are suffering financially, so device manifest abundance and prosperity and bring us and manifest the golden age. And let's let's ask that everybody who who so chooses or, will, or, or who wants it to go into a timeline where we don't have a pole shift, where these people can be rounded up peacefully and we also let's ask for all the the secrets of the shadow government being exposed on WikiLeaks. Everything about the reptilians, the grades, everything and that first contact will begin. And device in session, open your eyes. So uh you know and that's and that actually is the proper way to pray <laughs> is to actually do visualization seeing as already done. So mm -hmm. um again if you want to learn more, go to my website, www.neologicaltech.com. And actually, I've got a free unit on there. You don't actually have to buy one. And there's med free meditation. So there's a lot of free stuff on there for people who don't have money. And I'm going to post a link. Let's see here. Okay. All right. Does anybody I have, have a question questions? about the technology, actually. Um, sure. Uh, what uh, function does the does the box play in that? Uh, is it is it absolutely necessary, um, well, okay. or yeah. is it or is it something to project upon? Like, what okay. is there is there any technology inside, or is there uh, some type of uh, a method of transmission or okay. receivership from from that all box? Right. Well, the 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 receivership, the method of receivership is quantum entanglement, where all pieces are all places, all times, where all fragments of God. So all you're doing is simply holographic holographically tapping into the fragment of of my God self is your God self. 
So um, and to answer your other question is how it works, it is actually like an orgone generator. The inside of the box um, harnesses qi energy, pumps it in through the core of the unit where it actually compresses into a stargate um, into the fifth dimension. And again, this is all just um, this is all ether physics. So you're not you're not actually going to open up. Well, I guess I mean you you would open up your wormhole, but you have to interface it through your own pineal gland, which also um, connects to the stargate. So you know um, to answer your question is well, why do you need one? Why? And the, and the truth is is that because our body um, needs not only physical matter. But it also needs chi energy to keep us animated. Whenever we eat food that is especially, um, let's just say raw food that is organic and healthy, or even raw food that's been preyed over, it adds a higher chi energy and life force energy and helps you feel better. In the same way, you know, if you, you can do breathing exercises or yoga, or um, there's other ways of bringing chi energy in your body, like sun gazing and so forth. So, um, so all this is, is it's a ZPE Qi Energizer, and uh, you can. There are other ways of bringing Qi energy in your body. So this is just one way of doing it too. Um, is there is there a way of measuring that that energy uh, um, input well, or output? Have you like when hmm. you when you were developing the the technology with your friend? Did did you guys do any tests or measurements? No. Um, I guess you know if we could get a let's see it would be a Krillian. I guess it would be Krillian photograph, and probably I, um, there's probably some. I think there's like this instrument that um, Scientologists use. I forget what it's called. I can actually measure um, whether you've been cleared or not. I forget what they're called. So there are there are instruments that can measure chi energy. I haven't been able to do it because it's the, those testing is expensive, and we're and but that's something that um, I'll look into in in a future date. Now, do you, do you use any uh, what type of materials do you use for your technology? Like a like a copper wiring? Uh, do you do you use uh, toroids or uh, uh, coils of any kind? Well, the inside of the unit actually has it's all it's all well it's not all copper, but it is primarily copper. Uh, there's also human hair, and that human hair is important because um, hair has well DNA, and DNA is crystalline. And crystals are scalar wave receivers. <laughs> For people who don't know what what that is, scalar well, that may, basically means it opens up interdimensional portals. That's why crystals are so important in metaphysics and the New Age com communities because you can actually open up portals into through other dimensions. So um, the actual what happens is the chi energy compresses into the unit. It, it passes through this human hair and open and that's when it, you know interdimensional physics but also the human hair contains many uh micro amounts of different kind of elements like gold platinum uh silver and each one of these each one of these metals carries a certain vibrational frequency it could be paraelectric healing or it could be um life force so or even like you know if you get in like the the um I think it's called the, the platinum group metals, like platinum and gold. You can start even doing like anti-gravity kind of things. That's why a lot of, um, at least the extraterrestrial spaceships <laughs> use a lot, utilize a lot of gold because uh, it's anti-gravitic. But it's very expensive, so we, we probably stick with copper to make it affordable. Okay. Um, now, when you mentioned it with the with the DNA, uh, there there was actually a uh, physicist. Uh, or theoretical physicist who was actually able to uh, transmit uh, electromagnetic signals uh, into culture dishes, and uh, that that basically, uh, depending on the wavelength and the frequency, uh, he he was able to produce either to transmit a disease or a uh, a cure, uh, and 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 in fact he he was also doing studies on uh, the DNA itself, whereby when when DNA is removed from a cell. Uh, that that the DNA actually left an electromagnetic signature, um, and the reason why why I bring that up is is uh, specifically because of the nature of DNA. Now, w what would be the purpose of using, say, for example, um, uh, copper or or some type of uh, a metal or even even human hair for the for the DNA aspect if if the DNA itself uh, that I, the, the the electromagnetic signature that actually makes the DNA is is already uh, present without without the physical being. Um, what would be the purpose of of using the device to connect through that instead of just using your own DNA uh, and using using your own body? 
Well, I mean, you you need you actually need to have a crystalline component of the device, and that's one of the reasons why we use, hair has two primary purposes: it's the crystals and actually the minerals. So, I mean, there are ways you can actually use it holographically, but even even still, you have to animate. You have to use your body's own chi energy if you want to create like a holographic version of the device while we were meditating. Everybody in here uh, just visualized um, a holographic version and using quantum entanglement and. So you're you're only you're you're limited by how much chi energy that your body is producing it currently. Okay. Now, have you done have you have you done any other any other testing or uh, besides like when you were developing the technology, have you tested it on uh, any any individuals that aren't familiar with uh, with meditation or chi energy? That yeah. They were, able, well, were they able to yeah. notice any any differences or changes or uh, anything happening in their own lives as a result? Okay. Well, I can tell you um, for the people that have have purchased one in the past, um, the most common effect would be synchronicities, where the device, if you use it, the technology on a daily basis, you start manifesting um, well synchronicities where like um, if you have a certain need and you may not even know about this need, um, and it and it just manifests like for instance, I needed to get my um, my lawn core ar aerated. And um, I didn't really want to go out and deal with hiring somebody. And what happened is, somebody um, somebody core, somebody went out and core aerated in my yard, and they made an act. They, they accidentally aerated the wrong yard, so they <laughs> they did mine for free. That's what I mean by synchronicities. You start seeing stuff like that just show up in your life. Just really good, positive things, and um, your whole life just totally just it, it's 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 it's. It's so it's so much more more than just you know in the past where I was taught in, in church that you, if you had a need you pray to Jesus and ask Jesus to give it and and rarely nothing <laughs> rarely anything ever manifested but with this you can actually think about it you know just you don't even have to meditate it's just if you already if it's on your mind um, then you're going to manifest it and it just makes makes your own co-creating abilities uh, come into reality. Well, it's uh, very, very interesting. I'd, li I'd like to hear more about the technology as far as the development and the thought process going, going into the development. Um, uh, I mean, what, what, what gave you the idea to, to, uh, to sell the technology, to develop the technology? Was there, was there anything in specific there, um, well, or was okay. it from some, some other uh, friend or uh, influence? Well, um, I, I, I. I worked with the inventor on it because I'm, I'm not the developer of this technology. I should say that right now. But when I was working with the inventor, I, I built one myself, and um, I liked it so much. And uh, he, he was having trouble getting it marketed at, for whatever reason. Um, so we, I sold another one, and um, I, I, I mean, I built another one, and then I sold that, and then I realized that hey, there's a demand for this, and nobody's ever returned any of the units that I've sold. I mean, we've been in business for a year. And um, the technology has been in development for over 16 years. At least that's how long it took the, um, the inventor to get to, to this point. And it's still a, still a work in progress, and we're trying to trying to increase it and uh, make it tweak it a little bit, make it more powerful. But it is actually extraterrestrial technology. I mean, it's it's a, a very rudimentary form of it, um, but even still, <laughs> it's it's pretty powerful. If it's if it's based on an extraterrestrial technology. Um, and and trying to recreate, say for example, um, uh, to use a, a comparative term, uh, like to say a primitive version, um, would that not potentially cause uh, damage to to yourself or others, uh, just based on the fact that if the if the uh, extraterrestrial version is different from our own, based on what uh, methods we have available of manufacturing. Uh, do you think that that could cause damage because they did have a refined version? So perhaps maybe that their version uh, would would be, uh, I would say, better in 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 some way uh, that they perhaps made a change because of something that was potentially damaging that we haven't well, come the, across yet as human the, beings. The technology um, is it, it's when I say rudim, uh, rudimentary form, it's it, that means it's not as powerful as the units the extraterrestrials have. But even even them, um, uh, they also have these units in inner Earth, where uh, like in uh, Telos and Mount Shasta, they actually have um, a version of my idea. 
their unit would be like equivalent to an IDL 744, and I, I only the highest ones I sell is IDL 64, and um, so and plus they have gold, platinum, silver, you know, all their units. So you know, we we just and they have replicator machines and all that. We we don't really nanotechnology. We don't have access to those technologies yet, but. Um, even still, copper is a still is a very healing is a is a powerful healing metal, and they use that's why they use a lot in like copper um, uh, wristbands and so forth. So copper is a really good good metal um, for healing and, and also good electrical conductor of energy. So it's um it's a pretty powerful machine, and uh, even the, even the smaller version, the IDL4, which is our smallest unit. That's pretty powerful. Even even the free version, uh, it doesn't have that one. Doesn't have. I mean, it's just uh, pure seashells. And that's pretty um, pretty amazing piece of technology. Although I prefer the copper version better because it's more energy. So, is there is there a specific uh, say refinement to the copper um, as far as purity is concerned uh, in in regards to this technology? Uh, well, it's, it's just copper. That's all. I'm sorry. I I I couldn't really answer any that any any of that question because, um, I mean, I whatever whatever the foil that I get from the manufacturer. So, like the grade, for example. I mean, uh, I guess for those listening who are wondering what what I'm asking is basically it's basically uh, um, when when you refine a metal, you you take out uh, impurities. Um, uh, by heating it or or um, applying pressure. Um, now, now with the the copper uh, that was found in some of these uh, the Sumerian tablets, is the co- these copper tablets were uh, purely refined. In fact, more so than uh, the copper that we have today for for making our own coils, or the copper that we use in our televisions and computers and things of that nature. Um, so if if there if there's not a specific refinement, um, do, w- would would that mean uh, that these these um, uh, technologies are are varying in their ability to transfer energy or to absorb energy? Well, I'm sure there's always a variant, but again, it's not just it's not just the the, the mineral content; it's also the shape because that's what really gives the, the unit its, its, its power and. and Ability is sacred geometry. Technically, I mean, they can they can be built out of plastic. Okay, it's not just the minerals; it's it's the shape where where like uh like a for instance, look at a pyramid. Even though the pyramids in Egypt are made out, I believe that what are they made out of granite or, or limestone, and um those they carry a certain amount of chi energy. And you can I mean, if you could build a pyramid made out of plastic that same size, it would also have great chi energy too. Maybe to a lesser extent because it doesn't have the crystals. In the in the plastic, so it's not it, it, it's it's really more of a combination of both kind of things going on here. And so um, it's very interesting. interesting. I'm not trying I'm not trying to grill you or anything, but I I do have to get the technical information out as much as possible. So yeah. don't don't but, don't don't catch me the wrong way there. All right. And I, and I think that also that um, because it it is you know how it goes, James, and obviously yeah. that is that this um, this. Technology. I mean, I think a lot of people are starting to hear about organ and organite, and I actually make some organite myself. Okay. And um, and so I understand like how it's it's the interaction of the fields. It's the causes the effect, and 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 Lad will be the first person to tell you exactly why and how those torsion fields interacting can cause oddness. I mean, <laughs> so and uh, and so yeah, that's and that movement that that's chi. That's that's that life force. That's prana. It's animation. And I, so, yeah, we get you. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to make well, one more uh, distinction here. Is that um, this technology? You know, some people say, "Well, why would you really need one?" I mean, can, can we just meditate and do it on our own? Well, that's true, but you're limited by how much chi energy your body is currently producing. That's why people do sun gazing. That's why people do pray over their foods, and that's why we eat healthy organic food. Yeah, so great. there are many ways of bringing more chi energy into your body. Um, Neo is, is one way of doing it. There are other ways as well, but you know, unless you want to spend, you know, if you want to go out and do sun gazing out all the time, for me that's that's inconvenient because you you can only do it like either early morning, morning hours or late afternoon, mm-hmm. and both the times I'm usually preoccupied. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and it's kind of and it's also expensive to constantly trying to find a good source of healthy organic food, and a lot of times you just can't. 
Oh yeah, yeah. That's what that's what I'm saying. That's, that's one of the things on the show I keep. Uh, you know, I'm a strong proponent of is we have to transcend our food because you know, yeah, we would like to eat better. I think everyone would like to eat better food, you know, because we're we're healthier. But you know, what if we can't? You know, we have to just we have to transcend as any way we can. And and luckily, yeah. there's been so many examples done of like you know very very destructive behavior. I mean, Lad shared shared with me this video of this man who um, makes his claim to fame by eating various things like deodorant and tampons and. And uh, crayons and glue. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's I can possible. find the link there. I'll post it in the chat for those who really want to see this. Yeah, and uh, it's it's amazing, really. So we're we're we are little god machines, in fact. So um, so yeah, let's get co-creating, and I think it's cool that you know these these creations, like you're saying, because you know the there is something to be said about the the organ energy it's it, it there is grounded enough fact in it and i think and i understand when we're talking about um you know the research because there isn't anyone who's done any kind of clinical research on it and that's one of the things that i mean i'm trying to do my own little you know informal um you know studies while you know just kind of very very just nonchalantly and mm-hmm. right now but eventually i would like i'm going to i want to do some controlled studies with stuff once i can see like you know, different ratios and different all of this and that, yeah. but no one does it, and it's not like everyone has a bunch of funding to go well, do this right now. You know, yeah. the original inventor of the, um, William Reich, and of course mm-hmm. he did a lot of studies himself. But mm-hmm. his, after, you know, after he was arrested, they they impounded all his. The government took took all of his books and they burned them. It's only like only the few times in the history of the United States that the government actually burned books of an inventor. Uh, that's you know how much you know they were trying to stop his research being out. You know only tiny fragments of it's still out now. Mm-hmm. But, um, well, even the Spanish uh, Inquisition, they burned a lot of uh, a lot of Mayan books, um, yeah. which results in, in in the misinterpretation of the Mayan calendar as well. Um, and they also the the uh, Westinghouse also burned uh, Tesla's lab down. So it wasn't just his books, but it was also his technology, by either through fear or through some means of a cover up. But yeah, it's it's fairly common that, that there are technologies out there that are just suppressed as as much as humanly possible. Uh, uh, even even if it is out in the public consciousness, uh, it does take time to uh, uh, to I guess say to say to, to be reinvented. Um, to quote the big saying that, that that there's nothing new under the sun, and that's probably true. So. Hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and I, I, that's what that goes into my changes on the horizon documentary, and um, I talk about how basically you know these ruling elites they knew how to do all these these advanced technologies like um, gold transmutation. They turned lead into gold, and the, the alchemists. So they had all this technology, you know. And, but here's the common average person, you, the Joe Schmo, and you know we, we don't have access to to that, but now we can. Yeah, and that's, uh, I'm glad you brought up your your um, your documentary. Um, there is a you know quite a bit of information in there, and once again, I highly recommend it for everyone out there. Check it out. Um, what what inspired you to create that that documentary series? Okay, well, this was I guess this would have been about around 2007, and I was I was always researching the SARA, the National Economic Security and Reformation Act. Mm-hmm. Um, for those who don't know what NASAR is, it basically get, gets rid of the Federal Reserve, the IRS, returns its back to constitutional law, it um, it cancels out all debts. It's like a jubilee of debt, um, and also it, it ends all wars. It requires um, all military bases overseas to close and return our troops back to you know the United States, where, which is what they should be. Um, be nice. Releases free energy technology, all these technology. It's so it totally you know it's it's basically brings us into the golden age. So, you know, I'm I'm researching all this, and people are constantly poo-pooing it on the Internet and say, oh, this doesn't exist, blah, 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 this is a, no, a scam. But nobody wanted to do a, do- a documentary about it. It's like, well, geez, I mean, if it's such a scam, you know, w- the way I look at it is like this. Look at the news media. You don't ever hear the news media talk about human cloning. The truth is they've been cloning people since 1978. They've been cloning presidents, Congress people, uh, Joint Chief of Staff. Mayor, they openly Gunther. admitted to cloning Dolly the sheep, and yeah. they rubbed it in our faces. Yeah, and then, of course, they dropped it out of the public eye. It's one of their rituals of basically telling us what they're doing yeah. and mm-hmm. pointing to it. And if no one pays attention, oh well, that's their fault, not ours. Right. You know. Right. Um, so you- and, and you're absolutely right that they they, they they continue to do it. Uh, okay. 
Well, well, just look at the media. You see a blackout on cloning. You see a blackout on UFOs and extraterrestrials. I mean, we know the grays and reptilians are here. All these experiencers are talking about it, but it's never talked in the mainstream media. And it's the same thing with Nasara. It's never talked about in the mainstream media. It's not. I mean, they don't even joke about it. They don't even make fun of it. It's like, well, geez. So, you know, and it started making me upset that somebody like the caliber of um, Zeitgeist, why couldn't one of these people who, do, who, who can pr produce ho professional Hollywood documentaries, why don't they at least go out and try to just look into it? And nobody did it, so I decided, you know what, all right, I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> well, I think, I, tried, I think, too, you know, as, as far as shut, shutting, you know, what, what, when they have a, a blackout or shutting people down, I mean, two points on this. One, uh, if you look at the media... They don't even say the word fuck on TV. If they'll censor the word fuck, which is just an <laughs> English word that everybody uses in its common term, imagine the kind of things that they'll leave out. And on the second point, that, you know, as far as, you know, what people believe to be true or not, that that's entirely up to them and, and absolutely, you know, I respect people's beliefs. Um, but, but I do uh, have a problem with people who will say, you know, this guy's full of, full of shit. Um, but they won't even ask the question, you know, it's, well, why do you think he's full of shit? Well, because it's, because he's full of shit. Well, let's just hear him out. Let's, let's hear what he's got to say or she's got to say, you know, and actually look into it because, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, if you lived way up north where there's no aircraft and you've never seen an airplane in your life and someone came up to you and said, oh, yeah, they got these big metal things that fly up in the air – they're a thousand times heavier, you know, than you, uh, I'll say, well, I can't fly. And my logic basis says, I can't fly. Birds are smaller than me. They're lighter. Therefore, birds can fly. But something the size of a 747 couldn't, according to my own logic, at, you know, based on what I see. And this is what's happening with, with a lot of people that they just, they refuse to accept it. They refuse. And, and of course, you know, I mean, if someone were to say, hey, well, what, let's go, let's go to, let's go into the city, let's go to the airport and watch a whole bunch of these things fly. And then it's, well, no, I don't need to go to no airport. The airport doesn't exist. I don't need to hear about it. Shut up. You know, this is, this is basically what's happening with, 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 uh, you know, censorship. It's not just media censorship, but it's also self censorship that people want to edit their reality so that they don't have to, change their their perception um so you know absolutely that 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 this is something that that i've seen um even even in the in the conspiracy movement that you know it's it's like okay well i'm only going this far you know i'll i'll talk about 9-11 but i'm not going to talk about aliens or i'm going to talk yeah. about aliens but i'm not going to talk about uh pan-dimensional beings or something you know, I mean, it's just it's it's a self censorship, and it, right. it's up to the individual. Well, but hopefully, we can actually get people to open their minds a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, how about how about I go talk a little bit about Nassar because we only got yes, um, I guess we got a few more minutes left here. I want to get this in for yeah. the show ends. Um, you know, the the documentary goes in a lot more about Saint Germain. It even talks about history of banking and constitutional law and government. Uh, that's all nice and all, and you can learn about how you know all the Illuminati accounts are all set up and all that. But part three is the most important part that you should see if you only have you know one hour of time and that's all you want to see. And that is um, the that talks about Nasara and basically what that the way the, how the story begins is that in the 1970s there were a group of farmers that were having their farms foreclosed on by the banks illegally. Basically, they would put clauses in the mortgages that stated that if, if, the, far, the, if the owner died, the, the farm would be reverted over to the bank. And um, it was these kind of clauses, or they would have exorbitant interests. So they, um, they started a class action lawsuit, and this class action lawsuit eventually went all the way up to the Supreme Court, where the Supreme Court ruled in the farmer's favor that, indeed, um, the bankers um, did not have a charter to do business in the, uh, as part of the American banking system, but so did the Federal Reserve Bank, so did other quasi-organizations like the Federal Housing Administration, um, you know, Fannie Mae and all that, So mm -hmm. and the Farmers Credit or, um, Association. So all these organizations were deemed illegal, but not only that, they also ruled that the IRS was a Puerto Rican trust, that, um, that all the money um, taken by the IRS has to be returned back to the people, that... Um, they also ruled that we need to go back to a gold back currency, as the Constitution dictates. You know that that Nixon illegally took us off the, um, the you know, the silver standard in '70. I think it was '70, 
72 or something, 70, 73. Um, so, you know, so that was around 1991. And, of course, the courts and the government sort of stalled, and they put a gag order on it. Um, so what happened is the military generals got involved. There were actually white knights within, I believe, it, I, I, I think this has to do with the Office of Naval Intelligence, because I know it was Admiral um, McLeod, um, I think, uh, at O.C. was CIA Director Colby. Um, and there were some other ones that are now the, now deceased, but they were involved. And uh, basically, what they did, they 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 made an order to the Federal Reserve that said, you know what, um, we're going to audit you, or we're going to see what's on your books. This was in '93, and they found that the Federal Reserve, they found that there was about eight, they had 800 trillion dollars in money and accounts that were not being applied to the national debt. Um, and they, so they confiscated this money, they stuck it, they they. They placed it in Europe, European bank accounts, where it's been earning interest to basically pay these farmer claims, um, because a bit, um, there was about 200,000 claims eventually filed for fraud against the government. And so, um, and also that money is going to be paid for the new gold-backed currency that I mentioned earlier with Nasara. So we fast forward around 95, 96. They arrest the leaders of the farmer claims program. The government does. They come down on them. Um, then around 98, they realized that the government was totally stalling themselves. So they passed, they, they had a, um, they, they put a, a law through committee, and eventually that law was voted on. And I think in um, 2000, I believe, um, that was actually passed through Congress, and, and President Clinton signed into law. Um, and then it was going to be announced on September 11, 2001. At, at a uh, 10 a.m., of course, at 9 a.m., the banking computers in the World Trade Center um, were exploded, um, <laughs> and also the the office of um, the White Knights of the Office of Naval Investigations in the Pentagon were also bombed. Um, there wasn't a plane right. that hit that Pentagon. We both know. I think we're, we're all the same frequency there. At least most of us listening to this show. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. So there was. And they were they were also keeping data on um, you know the, in these computers of all the the, the, the dark and the dark cabal, but that's okay. They they may have bombed those computers. There are backups. There are plenty of backups, so they're not going to totally get away from ever. And so you know from 2001 to the present, they've been trying to stall it in many different ways. They have all these different ways. Like one one way one way is they're trying to um, do Basel III, which is increase the net um, capital requirements of the banks. Which means the banks have to have a certain; they actually have to have more money on their balance sheet to actually fractionally lend off of. And they didn't; they didn't have the cap capital back in 2008, and that's why they had to do the um, the TARP bailout. If the if the government didn't bail out these banks, they would have been well; they're already insolvent. <laughs> you know, insolvent means that they don't have the money; they're they're mm -hmm. they're bankrupt right now. And so now they're now Obama talking about doing a QE3. So. You know, the banking system is about ready to implode. Um, the question is, how bad is it going to get? Are we going to go to a, a new government? I mean, a, a government that reflects the will of the people, you know, gold back currency peacefully, or are we going to have you know, martial law? Uh, you know, if, if it gets really bad and they actually do try to crash the dollar, um, probably what, what's going to happen is that these elites that did this, they, the people that run these banks, they're going to be hunted down and they're going to be exterminated. And the people in the military, the White Hats, are going to do it. But if they do it peacefully, if they allow the changes to occur, then they, their, their, their lives will probably be spared, I would guess, depending how, you know, how, how much they cooperate. So that's kind of like where we're at right now. In a brief nutshell of the story. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. any questions? Yeah. Well, I was just a comment, too, about one of the things, one of the clips that you put of, uh, you know, Junior Bush up there yeah. on uh, appointing uh, Paulson to the head of the Fed saying, we need someone... Um, outside of the normal politics. What he's really saying there, people, is not that he's not a politician. He's saying he's above the law. Okay, he's saying he's he's part of the cabal. That uh, It's like nothing will come down on him unless they come down on him. So he's saying that they need to appoint someone who's above the law, is basically what they say. So think about that every time you look at one of the Fed chairmen. That's pretty much what they are. So it's because they're part of the cartel. They're part of the big banking ones that makes the currency, that makes the laws. So it's like, eh, those change it. <laughs> and then, and I'm sure you, res you, you know, that resonates as truth with you there with the essence of King James in there, <laughs> yeah, right, James? <laughs> so yeah. Um, well, I mean, right on the front of the book it says, uh, "Well, whose version of the story is this?" Oh, it's the King James version. 
<laughs> you know, I was actually waiting for the uh, the Rick James version to come out. Oh, okay. uh, you know, <laughs> I'm I'm Jesus, bitch. Slap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we can write that. Um, since we're since we're into the blasphemy here, anyways. So, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I'm glad you brought up the Nazar thing because I was really um, curious about that as well as actually because there was something you mentioned about uh, Bush Senior about like. Um, essentially sort of like, a, I mean, you can almost call it a military coup. Um, and I know that that's happened in, this, in the past here in America where people realize it or not, where basically the military is like, no. <laughs> you know? So um, the, the particular incident that you cited on there, was, is there any elaboration you can give on that? About what? The, uh, about, about 9-11? About, about uh, Bush Sr. trying to enact, um, uh, you know, their agenda kind of oh. insert. Okay, well, yeah, uh, from from the research that I've uncovered, um, apparently Bush Sr., he's like the head of the Omega Project, which has to do with the New World Order. Um, but, you know, w when you would say Bush Sr., is he really still a Bush Sr., or is he a clone? I mean, <laughs> chances are he's, the real, the original one has probably been long since died a long time ago, and it's just mostly a robot tied into the AI computers running the show right now. You know, that's all he is, he's just a robot. And he's getting his marching orders from this reptilian consciousness that's, again, that's tied into the AI. Is, you know, who's running the AI? Uh, you know, that's a big question mark. Well, I, I, I can't answer that. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, even Bush Senior, I mean, he thought that he could just crash the American dollar and run off to Paraguay. Into his, uh, he's, he's got this huge ranch down there. And, um, mm -hmm. and he, they also have a lot of money tied in that the Nazis... Um, got a hold of and um in Argentina and Paraguay so they're they're all got a big budget. Yep, yep. You got to yeah, that's and that's uh you know the the South American tie. I mean, I think that's pre getting pretty well established now. I mean, and there's a lot of uh a lot of information about Paraguay, Uruguay that uh gets into a lot of a lot of the psychic programs too that really works more into the like cuz that's one thing like like just to kind of uh, you know throw this in there, James, for you, because I know a lot of people. You're you're, a lot, you're very controversial to some people, especially in relation to the whole super soldier concept. But I think a lot of people, when they're thinking that, they're thinking they're always thinking boots on the ground in Iraq or Afghanistan or all this other stuff like that. But there's an interstellar war that's going on that um, you know that that that's part of that. And I, and George Kavasalis in the re recent Project Camelot interview talked a little bit about that too. And it all comes out of where South America. You know, just same place where everyone was talking about where they th theorized Hitler ended up too. You know, so it's all interesting stuff, and that's that's why um, like I said, and I, I really I, I agree with you that for all rights and purposes, I think that that a lot of these elites are just puppets in in a in a way that most people don't really think about, and and it really is kind of biblical. It's like possession. It really is like possession. That is a reality. It's like whether people realize it or not. So, so yeah. This is my little commentary there. Um, and as far as like uh, as far as questions go, um, the uh, the Nazar thing. Um, where does that stand as of now? Well, they're they're still trying. Of course, they're still trying to get it passed. Um, you know, the problem is there's so much opposition. The people, the white knights in the military, they just they don't want to. Uh, they 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 don't really want to come out with it because they've lost so many uh, people on their own ranks trying to bring it out. I mean. If you come out in public, you get killed. So the question is, are they going to try to do a coup? Um, I, I don't know if that's going to work. Um, the other option is just trying to just... Um, um, I, I, of course, I, I, I'm a regular reader of the Benjamin Fulfer reports. So I, I don't know. <laughs> Some mm -hmm. people have their mixed, you know, their mixed feelings about Benjamin. But um, one of the recent... One of his reports is that uh, these elites... Um, I should say elites. Uh, basically non-NATO countries, you know, people, well, actually, not just non-NATO, because there's Japan, and, and there's other, you know, India, and these countries of the world that are being suppressed by the international bankers, they're actually teaming up to create their own coalitions right now. The Federal Reserve Board, and, you know, the the, the, <laughs> the Rothschilds need not apply, so they're, they're, right now, they're trying to set up their own monetary system um, outside the influences of the IMF and the Federal Reserve, and mm -hmm. so... What we're probably going to see right now is we're we're going to see this whole monetary system die. It's go, it's it's already dying. We're seeing it right now. Um, mm -hmm. The question is how hard is it going to die? You know how um, how you know what will the transition period be like? 
Um, and I guess that all depends on how many people within the government are willing to step forward and be bold and say, okay, enough is enough. I'm tired. You know, it's, I, I enjoy having a couple billion dollars in my Swiss bank account. Well, now Swiss, Swiss isn't, Switzerland isn't such a rosy place to keep money, but you know what I mean. Um, mm-hmm. so they're going to say, okay, this money is going to be worthless <laughs> you know, pretty soon. I might as well decide to be bold and stand up, and I'm going to go ahead and do something about this. So perhaps there's somebody out there listening to this um, that, that – will decide to take that next step and be bold. You know, that's all it takes is only a few people, you know, and you know, a lot of people just don't want to do it because they're so afraid. Perhaps they'd want to give us that billion dollars for our technical research. I think that would be kind of a bold move there. Yeah. A couple of quiet bank account transfers, you know. Yeah. I I think I think that'd be kinda nice. Yeah, we could have some hard science on the organ energy, you know, bring yep. some uh, <laughs> miraculous manifestation to everyone's lives. Hmm. Perhaps maybe we can fly to the Gray's planet and kidnap them and do some probing and, uh, okay. you know, find out what makes them tick. Yeah. You know, <laughs> research there. Yeah. Yeah. Find out if it tastes like chicken or not. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, oh, you know, I like to make light of the dark here. Um Either way, we're we're almost out of time here, James. Is there any last yeah. thoughts? And for sure, let, give us you know your link to your website and everything to All right. buy stuff. Okay, it's uh, neologicaltech.com. dot com. I uh, post a link in the website there. Um, yeah. So uh, and use my use my name if you want to get one to get ten percent off. Yeah. Definitely, uh, definitely cool. Everyone likes to have a bar- get a bargain in this day and age. And um, and, and so, is there any uh, any plans for any future documentaries? Any, any well, principles? people have been asking me, James, why don't you do one about cloning? People have all these questions about human cloning. I'm like, well, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. It took me three years to do changes on the horizon, and you know, I have to decide: do I want to do a documentary about cloning, or do I want to try to get these neos out to the public? And try to get mm-hmm. on, you know, maybe even get ones that can help you levitate and do time travel and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, you know, there's a lot on my plate. I I almost wish I could get access to my clones and have them help me out. You know, <laughs> yeah, okay, huh? unfortunately, it's just I'm just a one man operation right now. So we'll see. <laughs> when is that technology going to become available? <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot, James. It's been yeah. a, been a great show and uh, very informative and very intriguing and. And uh, I'm sure everyone appreciated it. So. Yeah, thank you. Well, Lad, any uh, last words there? Well, to quote myself uh, the previous show, boobies, it is all-powerful. All-powerful, the ATA. Um, so thanks, everyone, for rocking with us here for the past couple hours, bringing you all the information, major media, and even the alternative media will shy away from for just being a little too real. And Because, uh, yeah, as we know, you know, it all is real, one way or another. And we're here to bring about that new reality that we know is there, that we know we want to see. And you know what? We're not crazy because it is all there, and it is all there for us, all there for the taken. So, um... Why don't we take it, knowing that it is real for us, including that very real prize goal at the end of the r- end of the rainbow here. Rock on, everyone. My crystally star CD, rainbow children who are bringing about the change.